welcome to the fifth edition of the India Art Fair. It's going to be an exciting three days in Delhi where we're going to see some of the best contemporary and modern art that's out there. The next three days is about galleries coming into India, showing what they have. Indian art is showing what they have to give to others. And of course, international participation. The point is to capture the best of the Indian modern contemporary art scene. I'm going to go inside and take a look at what's on the walls and also perhaps get a chance to speak to some of the biggest voices in the art world. Come with me. Since its inception in 2008, the India Art Fair has attracted over 260,000 people and it is only getting bigger, better and more vibrant this year. Bringing together about 103 exhibitors from 23 countries to put forward one of the best showcases of modern and contemporary art in South Asia, the India Art Fair is all set to court every creative soul who visits the fair. Okay, so I have the great fortune of meeting the Subodh Gupta and here I am next to this wonderful piece that you've done for this, uh, for this particular fair. Uh, just tell me a little bit about it Subodh. Uh, this piece is called Family Portrait and I'm talking about like, uh, 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 like and since I'm working everybody knows I work with utensils and uh, but when uh, uh, it's like an old tradition in India, uh, some of them utensils you find within home and you say this is a utensil from my dad, this is a utensil from my grandfather right. and this is it's traditionally so how the uh, uh, recognition come within the pot and pans of the ancestor and the family. You've always pushed for the fact that there should be more exhibiting spaces in India. You've always said we should have you know yes. the, the art fair is maybe not just enough yes. for this to be. Only for three days don't forget that and it goes and it will come next year. Now just one last question which is that sometimes people say that art is elitist. What is your answer to that argument? Well, today if some intellectual like uh, uh, Vikram Seth and Ar Anudati Rai Rai write the book, uh, they write the book about the common things, but uh, who read it? Intellectual read it. Who can read that book? Only those people read it. So what you will say to that? The Riksawala should read it as motto of order for small things, but here at least Riksawala can see it and people from those people, so either access to both of us. Thank you very much, Mr. Gupta. Thank you. Yeah, I'm seeing more participation from South Asian artists and of course one of the people who's done something specifically for this summit is uh, Mahbubur Rahman, he's here from Dhaka. I just want to talk to you about participating and having done a piece for the Indian Art Fair. It takes like a, it takes a long time to produce this piece and there's a, so many story behind that work and, and the work process and bringing them is a large piece in India to all the you know the uh, the process the, right. and it was uh, quite uh, and are you excited about the what, what you've seen I mean have you seen have you met a lot of interesting collectors or a lot of people who sort of asked about Bangladesh art or, or about your art specifically uh, actually my piece is you know in the outside and I'm not all the time over there but I found there's many there's many interest, uh, interested people who are taking photograph but uh, unfortunately they, they can't uh, and notice that in, in the from the back you can get in and see more thing you know there's a video installation and sound thing and it's amazing uh, for me to put put up that uh, you know piece in, in the uh, within the big audience we've been saying there's all sorts of interesting things to be looking out for at the art fair and one of them is of course interesting people who are showing Hi. us art in very wonderful ways and that's Peter Burke Hi. he's a director of a moving gallery is that it that's right it's Pursuit Gallery I'm from uh, Melbourne Australia okay. marketing uh, Indian artists this year. I was here last year uh, selling Australian artworks. This right. year I'm here, I've got a lot of uh, artworks by about 32 Indian artists. 32 Indian artists? Yeah. Where are they? Oh, they're in my suit. No they're way! Right yeah. 
Can you guys see this? Can you see what I can see? And if I sort of picked up one of these pieces, I would own a piece of TNT or I'd own a piece of... Is that it? So if you took a little artwork, for example, you'd have a little original work here, signed, dated and titled. Wow. Um, hand painted by the artist and um, you might not be able to afford some of this stuff but this okay. stuff you can take in your pocket home tonight yeah, yeah put yeah. it on the fridge put it beside the bed in the home in the office wow that was amazing on the other side of this break we will be talking to some of the galleries that are exhibiting here and catching up with some more artists Welcome back. We've been talking to some of the hottest contemporary artists in India, but of course it's very important to also take a step back and look at the modern masters as well. What I'm surrounded by right now is the progressive artists. You have Hussein over there, Baruta, Jamni Roy, Raza, and on this wall of course you have Souza as well, and there uh, you'll have uh, Tayeb as well hanging there. So there's a lot that's going on in this space. Important to really look at all those different periods and also take a look at the different frames and how they've evolved over time. Come with me. with Amit Badera. He's a partner at Creon Capital. It is a niche art advisory that we're talking about. I understand that you, of course, have been doing this for many years. One of the most interesting aspects of your booth is that you have wonderful art that's from the masters. So what I really wanted to ask you about was that, you know, there's a lot of interest in contemporary art, of course, but, you know, a lot of collectors still want to come and look at what the masters were doing. What is your sort of sentiment about the classic, you know, the, the, the masters versus contemporary at this stage? The masters are key artists who are going to remain, you know, forever. Um, both as far as investment value is concerned as well, you know, as, as, well as aesthetic value. Uh, the contemporary art market has been developing over the years, you know, um, I think 90% of the booths today are contemporary, you know, at least in the art fair here, with few booths who have, you know, a fantastic collection of modern works. Uh, contemporary art has been growing, you know, for a while. You know, we had several artists, which were, you know, the Subodh Gupta and Bharti Kares, who hit million dollars. But it's, you know, forever evolving. Whereas what masters can give you is something which is, you know, um, history, which is fantastic, aesthetics, which are fantastic, and also, you know, they have different genres, so it pleases pretty much everybody. You know, and it can be passed on generations. Could could you perhaps say that we're going to have more serious collectors in the next few years? I think slowly, you know, as people are understanding quality over quantity, you know, I think, you know, the collector base will grow. It must grow. India is a rich country. They have the money, you know, if they're buying luxury houses, luxury cars, art follows suit next. All right, Amir Vira, thank you very much for talking to us. national galleries that come around and you get a chance to see their works here. Scream is a fabulous gallery in London. It's been around since 2006 and they are here. And of course, trust Scream to come up with some of the most incredible exhibits. And uh, I have with me here the director of the uh, gallery. Uh, what I wanted to ask you was that these are fabulous pieces and obviously you've put them up knowing that Indian um, sort of collectors, the people you'll be meeting here, are getting increasingly experimental with their taste. So what is it that you're seeing sort of change in terms of, you know, initial expectations of the way collectors in India would perhaps perceive works from screen? Well, um, I'm just delighted by the response we've had already in the first day. I mean, we're sort of selling pieces, there's a real buzz, there's a real activity. And I think, you know, it was a little unfair because you just read so much press that says, um, stay away from India because the taxes are difficult and it's bureauc bureaucratic processes are complicated to get around. But we've ignored that and I'm um, pleased to say that we're here despite all of that. Because okay. um, I think there is, um, why should India be treated any differently? We have a really international group of collectors, including Indian collectors. And I think Indian collectors need to see great contemporary art. And we're getting a great response, so I think that the Indian audience is really receptive to what we're doing.
can see we've looked at quite a lot of artists that are participating and different galleries as well. And I have with me uh, Paul Stoppel, who's here from London. And I have to tell you that I looked at the Damien Hurst and I found myself just walking right in. And I see that you have other artists as well. But uh, just a little bit about Damien and the kind of response you've had today. Well, it is, it is the first day and, uh, you know, Damien's one of the artists that we show, one of the many artists that we show. Of course, Damien has a huge international reach. He had that massive retrospective at the Tate. Uh, and so, you know, we brought him here knowing that, or well, hoping that there'd be an audience. And it's been fantastic, the reception that... And, and I understand that you were yourself collecting Indian art a while ago before it became so hot and popular as far as India is concerned. Um, what is your experience in terms of the kind of contemporary art you're seeing coming out of India now? Well, I just, I just happened to, I, I, I came here quite a few times when I was a lot younger, in my early 20s, and I was really excited then because I was trying to make my way in uh, contemporary art in, in London. And so coming out to India, I was sort of searching out a similar sort of scene. And in Calcutta and Bombay and Delhi, there are definitely pockets of art happening. I didn't really have any money. I bought a few things. So, but I've always had a, an affinity, and I think the fair here really is a great representation of what's best in not only contemporary Indian art, but also, you know, 1950s, 60s, 70s art. the celebrated artist Anita Dubey. She wasn't here last year because she was participating in an international uh, uh, capacity in Bologna. in Bologna. So this is the first time that I'm actually seeing her standing here today. Um, what is your impression so far of the kind of you know pieces you're seeing around, the sort of hopes people have out of the art, uh, art fair? Look, uh, what is interesting is that uh, for a long time, of course, there's a lot of work coming from India, which is great because it's all there and uh, we in Delhi may be privileged, we may be seeing all the shows but people traveling from smaller towns and coming to, to the art fair uh, get a snippet of, of exactly what is going on in, in a matter of few days which is important because sometimes you know you don't have access to travel and as an artist who's participated in, 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 in numerous sort of exhibits and events around the world do you feel that something like this is also inspirational for artists themselves there's one thing that when you're trying to educate yourself yeah. so then you look at everything yeah if I'm if but then it could be that me as an artist I'm in my 50s early 50s I could be struck by one work in this whole mega fair that could really affect me and, 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 and uh, you know, not change my practice but yes, inform and, and, and enrich my practice. And I think uh, it is interesting, galleries are becoming more selective, they are showing some very amazing work, you know. Uh, it is uh, it's getting better and better. It's getting better. Thank you, Ms. Dubey. Thanks a lot for that. After having explored the works of masters and contemporary artists, on the other side of this break, we catch up with some art collectors and investors from the art fraternity. Welcome back to the special show on the India Art Fair. What I have behind me is a special piece that's been created by the artist Paresh Mehti and he has put together all these trunks and on them he's painted the monuments of this city. Now this is the typical sort of thing you're going to see in this fair. You're going to see interesting medium, you're going to see interesting ideas and really it's not about buying the art, it's about engaging with it. I would also like to talk to some of the collectors who can really tell us what we should be looking for in this particular fair. Let's take a look. that will not leave you without moving your soul. Creativity that will make you reflect upon things that make this world. And when all this can be enjoyed with an open heart, for the pure sense of satisfying your love of art, without any compulsion to buy, life can't get any better. So I am with Swapan Seth. He is known for his uh, taste in art. He's known also for the risks that he can take in terms of what he likes to collect and also the fact that you are genuinely very interested in the Indian art scene. Would you just show me a few of the pieces that you think are, are nice? Well, I love this work by, by Adit Dhaka. 
So I think really works with uh, with industrial scrubbers. So I have a bit of his work, which which is made out of the same material too. So I think it's fantastic. Very ordinary material, something that we use in our kitchens to wash our utensils. But it it's 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 a nail made out of an industrial scrubber, it's supposed to connote both construction and destruction of society. Simple idea, wonderfully kind of uh, curated, wonderfully put together. Good price, good buy. So this is actually an artist called Pankaj Pandey and, and Pankaj always works with waste materials, things that you kind of throw and then Pankaj you know always strives to preserve those things so this is as simple as the Genda Fool that we kind of offer to our gods during all our pujas and at, at the end of the puja you kind of discard it but he's kind of preserved this in this liquid and I thought you know once again very very simple iconic idea but preserved well I don't know how it's going to pan out I have no idea what what the reaction between the liquid and the flower is going to be over the years. But once again, a fascinating journey that I'd love to be a part of. Look at it, both of us sort of looked out at this. But then, you know, Fatima, that's the entire point. The point of the matter is that lovely art is something which is, which is quite universal. I mean, everyone who I've walked around with during the show has actually stopped by this piece and said, yeah, absolutely, and said, isn't it wonderful? So it amplifies the fact that good work is good work across, across eyes, across geographies, across wallets, across tastes. Take a look. My son would have, of course, been the first person to admire this greatly, but... But yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, it's it's quiche, it's it's poppy, but it's it's painstakingly crafted and must must have taken hours and months for the artist to put this together. And you know, it's vibrant, it's happy. It's what good art is, is supposed to be at the end of the day. All right, Swapin, I'm going to say bye over here, thank and thank much. you very much for having taken bye me around. Bye. And I look forward to seeing you again. See you. Bye. Amin Jafar of Christie's and he's doing something very exciting this year. He's gone to get a 30 of the collectors that he knows and he's brought them to the Indian Art Fair for the first time. How's it going so far Amin? It's fantastic. I think everybody's uh, excited, they're thrilled. It's a great opportunity to engage with what's coming out of India today in terms of art. And these are people who have been exposed to art around the world. Some of them may even have their own museums. They're all sort of known for their taste in, in what they've developed over the years. What are the, some of the reactions you've seen so far from them? Well, we went to an astonishing private house yesterday, we went to a museum yesterday, and today the art fair. And I think they're going away incredibly impressed. Their exposure to international art has been enormous, but it's not that easy to see Indian contemporary art outside of India. So I think they're excited, the fact that they're still here, running around the fair, collecting business cards, snapping things with their iPhones, sending pictures around the world, is an indication of their level of interest. evolution of our country that there is one more sunrise sector is Indian art and culture and uh, through a platform like this we believe that investment we are making is something which uh, you know reaches out to not only our Indian you know uh, customer base or potential customer base but reaches out because of outstanding coverage this property has across the world. Acting as a funnel for the Global Art Fraternity, the India Art Fair 2013 is all set to give you the best of the lot with its variety of artwork, innovative form, art installation, bookstores, speaker forums and a number of customized tours and curator walks. It's been quite a long day but I finally caught up with somebody who has been at this for a few years now and you've obviously been on your feet the whole day. Neha Kirpal, she's the founder, she's the director, she's sort of the person who's envisioned the scale of this entire event. Neha, I've already heard people say good job. You know, what is it that you think is going to be really different about this year? 
I think what's phenomenal this year is the is the quality and the scale of participation. So if you look at the 104 booths we have here, you know, from 24 countries, there are over three and a half thousand artworks. This range, this quality of work has never been seen in India before. It's not been seen in large parts of Asia before. So after spending an entire day on my feet, you'd think I was tired, but it's actually quite the opposite. It's been a rejuvenating experience because I've seen so many amazing ideas that have been sort of thrown out at me. This is a place that you can see a lot of fun art, a lot of colorful art, a lot of different mediums as well, but you also get to see political statements that are being made as well. The piece behind me is by an artist called George Kay and it's called The Seduction of Corruption. And it really is about corruption and the sort of tangles that it, that it can get the mind into. I also don't want to get into some very complicated analysis about this piece but what really stood out was of course the darkness of the piece and also the fact that the crow says ka 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 which is also why 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 which is the questioning of why certain things happen in society as well. So it's been an amazing day. I've seen all sorts of pieces. I highly recommend this experience for you as well. And I'm also really looking forward to the next year where the India Art Fair is bound to come back stronger, bigger and badder. Thanks for spending the day with me.